Right. Uh, a new French film is releasing in Australian cinemas on the 13th of October, a film called The Night of the Twelfth. And it's my great pleasure to be speaking uh, from Paris, the uh, director and co-writer of The Night of the Twelfth, Dominique Moll. Dominique, welcome to Movie Metropolis. Thank you. Good, good to talk to you, and, and I, I must commend you on, on uh, I think it was your last film, Only the Animals, which uh, was a very impressive film, so well written, and uh, uh, and so I, I'm, I was really looking forward to this one, which is just as good. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, um, this is based, the film is based on a true event, but uh, you and uh, Gilles Marchand, um, wrote the, the screenplay based on a, a novel or, a, or an essay or something like that. Tell me about that process. Um, yes, actually, it's based on two chapters of a book uh, written by a writer called uh, Pauline Guénard. And Pauline, uh, she spent uh, one year uh, with the um, uh, crime with a crime unit uh, in 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 the Paris uh, suburbs, and so the book is uh, is not a novel. It's a, a documentary book actually, where she she's telling you know what she observed during that year and how it's an inside look into the the police work, the everyday police work. Uh, which is not always glamorous, which is not always uh, spectacular, which is sometimes uh, harassing and boring. And uh, but it's really uh, a fascinating, fascinating book full of incredible details. And so she, she's talking also about different investigations and different crimes. And in the last two chapters of the film, She's talking about one particular investigation based on one particular crime, which is the murder of a young woman. And what um, what I I liked about the, this the the way she related that investigation is that she describes how one of the investigators uh, really becomes obsessed by this uh, by this crime and this investigation, the more so that they can't uh, find the, the culprit, uh, even if there are a lot of suspects, and how, yes, how this will haunt him and and how this will not let him go. And and so I, I so he develops an almost intimate relationship to that uh, crime and that investigation. And so that's something that I found uh, very, very interesting. Uh, and then when we started to work uh, on it with uh, on the screenplay with Gilles Marchand, uh, very quickly we saw that because it's uh, the murder of a young woman, uh, one of the, the themes also of the film would be the violence of men towards women and how this very masculine world, which is the, the police, because most of the police investigators are men, uh, how the, the, the fact that they are being confronted with violence of other men towards women, how this will question their own uh, masculinity. And so this, is, this was also um, uh, a thread that we thought would be interesting to explore. Oh, it certainly was. It comes through um, quite strongly in the film, especially later on when another uh, detective joins the investigation and we also have a magistrate who gets involved uh, in in the crime. And, uh, uh, and the point is made a few times, uh, very importantly, about men's violence on women. And uh, that, uh, yeah, that is, that is a major thread, as you say, of the film. Um, it, it, it's also so interesting the way you explore the psychology, as you've already described, of the police officers, in particular the two main ones, or the detectives who are investigating um, the crime. And you've got such good actors playing those roles. Um, uh, Bouillon, I, I, I haven't got it, Best, Best, Bastien Bouillon. Bastien Bouillon, and uh, yes. Bully Lanners um, as the older uh, detective. Casting is so important in a film like this. So you obviously spent a lot of time about that. Uh, yes, casting is, is uh, obviously very important because uh, 
<laughs> of course, the the actors will be the ones who who you know who embody and who carry the the characters that you've uh, written. Um, so we we did spend a lot of time on that also because um, it's it's not only those two investigators, but it's a small group of six or seven uh, investigators. And when when I uh, spend a week uh, with the the police of Grenoble, I, I really saw how important that group is and the group dynamic, and it's almost like their second, sometimes even their first uh, family. So we had to to constitute a group uh, that that would convey uh, that and uh, so with our with the casting directors we saw really a lot a lot of uh, of actors also we wanted faces that were not too well known uh, and um, and we saw a lot of actors for the uh, investigators for the suspects uh, for the also the the uh the, the the women because even if they're mostly men there are also a few important uh, uh female uh, parts and um and uh, we selected them very uh yes carefully and uh i must say that i i, I was quite uh, happy with the result and also in france a lot of uh, uh people from the audience or critics uh said that it was um great to see to see new faces um and uh because well usually you always take the the the, the same actors because it's easier to get financing uh, etc so you ha also have to to have the cu curiosity and uh, the the audacity to <laughs> look somewhere else and to try to find uh yeah some people that that are not well known Exactly, and and that's what makes it a, a stronger film because um, these are actors who are who are possibly not that well known, certainly not in Australia, and uh, they really live their characters, and so you really feel the psychology, the the personal uh, issues that they face, as well as trying to solve this uh, uh, torching murder, which uh, I thought was an incredible opening sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so well done on that. That uh, now, obviously, you had a stunt double, uh, and you didn't have the woman herself being torched. Yes, yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, I mean, it, 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 the way special effects now work, it looks so realistic. That I thought, uh oh. <laughs> well, well, actually, there were no special effects. I mean, uh, I mean, not no uh, visual effects that were done in post production. It was all all done in you know in in real and uh, uh with the stunt woman of course and uh who yeah. was protected uh and uh but it when we shot it it was really quite impressive because it was real flames and she was really uh burning and but we knew that we only had you know 15 seconds and that immediately they had to to put the fire out so that it wouldn't be um uh dangerous but we it's true that i i spent uh, quite some time you know thinking about how to film uh that uh scene and there were even discussions uh beforehand to know you know should we film that scene i mean should we show the the murder or, or not because there's always the risk you know that you become a bit uh, indulgent in the way you show the violence or that it's uh, unnecessarily spectacular. Um, and uh, and I, I think you have to be very careful with that. And, and, I, 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 and I, I knew that I wanted to, to film it in, in that way, which is in a, from a distance and, and not insist, you know, on the on the the victims uh, uh, expressions uh, etc but to but i but i also felt that it was important to have that image that the audience should have that that the, the violence of that uh, crime in their you know in their head which would um, keep, which they should keep in their head throughout the whole film Yes, oh, uh, absolutely. I think I think it's a very important scene, and in fact, the start of the film we see a, a title um, that says that twenty percent of murders uh, in France go unsolved, 
So that, yes. that, that gives the film uh, a sort of context because um, the investigation uh, is really so interesting with the uh, more and more uh, men coming forward uh, as being potential uh, murderers uh, in uh, uh, on this uh, on this poor young woman, um, and without uh, perhaps spoiling it too much, um, the audience um, really feels part of the investigation because I think the audience wants to know who did it. Yes, of course, the audience always wants to know <laughs> who did it, and the, of course the the. Um... And, and I think the fact that there is this those titles at the beginning saying, okay, this will be part of the uns, one of the unsolved uh, uh, crimes does not stop the audience from, you know, being very attentive because it's it's not because the crime is not unsolved that one of the suspects could not be the culprit. And so they they are the audience is in the same position as the investigators where they they want to know and they 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 are very focused on each uh, suspect and and try to see if there's not one little thing that could um make them you know uh, think understand that he you know might be uh, the 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 murderer and uh, and and I think um I think a lot of people told us that they really were completely involved in the the film and the investigation, and in spite of those titles at the beginning, were always hoping for you know the the the, the police to finally find the 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 guy who really did it. Yes, exactly, and uh, and and I, I sort of like the conclusion. It's it's uh, without uh, spoiling it. I I think it. The way that you end the film, I think, is is a nice way of exploring both the the main detective and his sort of um, I don't know transformation, maybe. Um, yes, yes. And, yeah, and also um, the criminal situation in in France, etc. So, um, I suppose you are always tossing up how you're going to end the film, but uh, that I thought that was a, a good way of ending it. Well, I'm glad you feel like that, that way, and uh, I I think what we uh, I mean what we felt was the most important was as you say was the 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 character development of this main detective and how what what uh, journey he goes through and what he takes from this whole investigation from this confrontation with all the suspects from his discussions with the magistrate who is a woman with the the young uh police woman who who joins the group later on and how this will change his way of um of seeing things and considering even his own his own job so that that was really what was important we didn't want um we didn't want the film to to be bitter or to to say okay because we don't find the culprit uh, the world is uh, a mess and fucked up and uh, and nothing you know it's no use trying to solve uh, things because we'll never find the the culprit so we 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 really wanted to avoid that and to uh, to also give uh, hope uh, in a way. I can imagine. Uh, I mean, the film has already been screened. I, I gather in France and uh, and other places. Um, what sort of response have you had, especially from the police? Um, we had very good responses from the police. Um, they we showed it uh, in Grenoble, where we shot uh, and where I invited all the the members of the of the crime squad that I had spent time with, and uh, and also in other places where uh, and I know that a lot of uh, members of the of the crime squad uh, everywhere in France saw it, and they all said that in their opinion it was the first time where they saw their job and their work being portrayed in a realistic way, uh, which is not uh, 
showing only the exciting stuff where you run after criminals or 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 are confronted with uh, uh yes with with really hard boiled uh, killers or whatever but this whole part which is also not so exciting uh where you spend a lot of time writing reports and where the printer doesn't work and uh and uh and and uh, also the difficulty of, of having to work uh do a lot of overtime and how the the family your family life suffers from that and all those aspects and they were very very grateful that for once um uh this was being shown uh so yes so we had very very positive responses from the police uh but we had also very positive uh responses from uh, uh non-police uh, audience and especially uh especially from uh from a lot of women and young women who were who said that they were grateful that a film and especially a film made by a man and or written by two men uh would um you know tackle those uh, subjects and talk about uh, male uh violence towards uh, women uh in a way which was not black and white but which showed the complexity of uh, of things and that they were really uh touched and moved uh, by that and that as a filmmaker of course is a great reward it it certainly is <laughs> tell me did covid have any impact on your filming no uh because um when there was the lockdown in france it was when we started uh, writing the screenplay so when you write a screenplay you're in a kind of lockdown anyway so uh, that didn't affect it and then when we shot it was right between it was between the end of the first wave and the beginning of the second wave with uh, the third wave or uh, the, the omicron wave yeah. and so we no i mean of course we we had a quite a strict uh, protocol and were all wearing masks and uh, and we had tests every week, et cetera, et cetera. But we didn't have uh, one single case of COVID during the shoot. So it didn't uh, it didn't alter um, uh, it didn't alter anything. What 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 has I mean, in terms of production, it didn't change that much what has changed is the is the fact that the the number of uh, people going to the movies has really gone down uh because during the lockdowns uh well a lot of people took uh uh you know turned to to to, to netflix and other uh, platforms and got used to you know watching stuff uh uh, at home and and uh, obviously the a lot of those people haven't found their way back to the movie theaters so the the uh, so we are still about i think uh, 25 to 30 percent down in terms of numbers uh, compared to pre-covid uh, so the, the that and that's uh that's a real problem yes yes it is uh I mean, the same thing happened in Australia, but uh, audiences yeah, are starting right. to come back. Yeah, yeah, which which is good to see. But um, uh, uh, Dominic, I, I know that uh, you're born in Germany, but you regard yourself very much as a French filmmaker, and uh, yeah. and and you've made a, a number of really interesting films. I I still remember very front uh, fondly. Um, uh, uh, a friend who, like Harry or someone something like with a, that with a friend like Harry with yes. a friend like Harry yeah that that was a, such an impressive film and uh, and you received some awards for that for that film a, a lot of recognition yes. yeah how do you decide what films you're going to make huh um well i think it's um I mean, for instance, the last two films, which were both both based on books, it's a uh, well. When I read a book, and suddenly I feel that something clicks, and that I I feel that there is something that I want not only to work on, but where I feel that I can 
bring something to it uh and that that i can um yes because th there are books or there is material where i say okay it's the great story but i don't know what i can add to it or how I can, and uh so that that's really important but it can yeah sometimes i mean in in, in as far as um as far as uh, the night of the 12th is concerned uh it was yeah when i read this investigation and suddenly i saw this i imagined this investigator you know not being able to solve the case and uh and it in in a way it uh, yeah it touched me and i felt i i wanted to see this guy on on screen and and uh and i didn't know exactly yet you know what the film would look like but there was this little thing uh and that was uh, sufficient to to you know to try to 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 work on it and then uh, other films which i mean you mentioned with a friend like harry which was uh, an original screenplay it's the you know it's just the beginning of a uh, there's this idea of of uh, two former schoolmates meeting in in the uh, in the toilets of a of a motorway station and uh, one recognizes the other and the other doesn't and where where does that lead us to so um yes it's so, so it's it's necessary to feel okay there is something which i can relate to and where i think i could possibly make a story out of it sure sure which leads me to ask the question are there any particular films or filmmakers that perhaps have inspired you in terms of the way you approach filmmaking <laughs> uh yes of course uh i mean the the one that was the most important to me was uh alfred hitchcock um and uh also because of the um, i mean i in my i come from a family where no one works in in film or i i, I didn't I, it seemed very uh something complicated you know to 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 work in in film and i didn't even know how how it was being made and uh, i was curious about how you know how someone conceived or made a, a film and um and it's true that the book uh with the interviews between truffaut and uh hitchcock was a revelation for me because i they were talking about very practical things and it wasn't you know highly philosophical or or anything it was just okay why in that particular scene or in that particular story the use of a, a close-up will uh will provoke that and that effect or the use of this camera movement or at that moment or what the actor will do at that moment or the music or the light or whatever and it was all this the, the the fact to understand that it was all you know practical questions and and answers and that all those different things the screenplay the music the the way you you break up the shots uh the camera movements uh that they all contribute to you to, to telling a story uh that was something that that i really that i really liked and that i also really enjoyed in uh hitchcock's uh films uh but then of course there were also uh many uh, others uh many other directors i mean be it uh, david lynch or or kubrick or but also um uh, I, I recently watched again a, a few films by Hal Ashby, uh, and uh, and I really, I really love his his work, uh, even if it's quite different from what I do. But I, I think what I love about Ashby is the the you feel that he loves his characters, and even if they they are sometimes ridiculous or <laughs> or, or uh, but he. There's this great humanity in his films, and uh, which is something I I really like. I don't like, I don't like cynicism. And I mean, for instance, yesterday I went to see the 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 Ruben Ostlund film, who won the Palme d'Or. Oh, yes. Uh, 
and I I really I I don't like it at all because I I it's so it's for me it's just cynical and and, and it's 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 uh, I don't even know what he what's his point and then I I feel that it's it's a bit easy, you know, to make fun of uh, of, of the super rich in such a in such a way, and so I don't. Yeah, it's not something that I like. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, I fully understand the way you've <laughs> described all that. That's uh, that's 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 perfectly fine. And so, uh, Dominic, just my, perhaps my concluding question: Are you working on another film at the moment? Uh, no, not yet. I am. I'm in a phase where I'm. Uh, you know considering material i'm reading stuff uh, i also have uh, suggestions where stuff is being materials being sent to me but uh, until now there hasn't been this thing that uh, you know that triggers off my my interest but um but so so i'm in a in a phase in a in a period of prospection and uh, and um but I, I'm sure that uh, it will, it will. This little thing will come pretty soon. I'm sure it will. I always uh, admire your films and look forward to seeing them. So, <laughs> we've been speaking to uh, Dominic Moll, who is the director and co-writer of *The Night of the Twelfth, releasing in Australian cinemas on the thirteenth of October. Dominic, thank you so much for talking with me. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.